Hi, what's better today? You're listening to the Leadership Advantage podcast with me, Dr. John Kenworthy, and brought to you by Selsim.com. It's why some leaders thrive and others struggle. Hey there, this is John Kenworthy, and welcome to this podcast, How to Hack Motivation to Make You Happier. Now, motivation is chemistry. See, you now you wish you'd paid attention at school. But motivation is chemistry. That feeling that you call motivation is to do with the dopamine, a neurochemical, in your brain. Specifically, it's the increase in dopamine in your nucleus accumbens. And it's the brain's feedback for predicting rewards. Dopamine is known as a neurochemical of pleasure. And sure, dopamine makes you feel good. So why can we also get a spike of motivation in times of great stress? Indeed, why are some people actually motivated to jump off suspension bridges? The role of dopamine goes beyond our feelings of pleasure. It actually performs its task before we obtain the rewards. Dopamine's actual job is to encourage us to act, to achieve or avoid something. Yes, to act or to avoid. Let's talk about golf for a moment. Many successful golf players and business leaders are motivated by their own dissatisfaction with their performance. And it can be a very powerful motivator. You would expect someone who is thus motivated to improve their game to be similarly motivated in other aspects of their life. Do you see a golf course as a series of obstacles? To be avoided? Do you see the fairways and greens as things to hit? Do you see your day as a series of obstacles to be avoided? Or do you see things that you actually want to achieve? There are few people who actually aim for the obstacles because they excel at the tricky shots. Most, however, find themselves in the obstacles due to misfortune. Or were they actually responsible? For most people, the self-directed anger resulting from dissatisfaction is not a positive state to be in. If you condemn yourself for playing poorly and use self-taught phrases such as I should have, or yelling at yourself, or outwardly, your self-disgust such as a useless idiot, or perhaps more colourful phrasing, you are doomed to repeat it. Not only will you repeat the error, you are physically hurting yourself. Self-condemnation causes self-directed anger, which causes stress, which causes physical distress, which causes physical sickness, and for many, heart failure. It's, as, it's a little as if your heart decides that it's had enough of your inward abuse and is desperately trying to communicate your need to stop doing it. If you've had a heart attack or stroke, you've probably completely reassessed how you live your life. I know I have and sought more tranquility, less stressful behaviours. In some cases, avoiding the major contributors to your previously high stress levels. The work, hmm, and for those golfers, yeah, it was the golf. Some people don't realise that this is what they're like, but the way you drive your car is often a good indicator of your style. How angry do you get when someone cuts into the queue in front of you? When you pull up to the red traffic light, do you swerve over to the other lane to be at the front of the queue? When motoring along, are you more concerned about getting somewhere quickly or more concerned with the traffic around you? Let's go back to golf for a minute. When you stand at the tee, what do you focus your attention on? Your target? Avoiding the trees, the bunkers, the water, the rough. I hope the former by now. If you've been with me all this time, what you focus on is what you get. 
Motivation is a multifaceted phenomenon. In large part, motivation is about the satisfaction of values held. It is the result of using particular personal resources towards achieving a specific goal that satisfies a value or value held by that specific individual. Connecting any of these three in any order, resources, values and outcome creates the feeling of motivation as the nucleus accumbens anticipates the reward for the price you are prepared to pay. In smaller part, though often the critical component, is the encouragement to achieve a goal. And it's worth spending some time here on what we mean by encouragement. The word has courage at its root. Thus, to encourage is to develop, enhance or build courage. Courage, you'll remember, it's not the absence of fear, but the continuation to do something of which you are fearful. It follows, therefore, that if we encourage ourselves, we are building the strength to overcome our fears and commit to an action. Encouragement itself is often mistaken for motivation, or exchanged for it. In order to get someone to accomplish something, they will need to be motivated and or encouraged to do so. It is possible to get someone, or even yourself, to do something which does not satisfy a value, but such actions are not repeated if no personal value is realised. That is, there is no reward for the nucleus accumbens to reinforce the dopamine spike. For example, many beginner golfers give up playing after being encouraged, usually by a relative or close friend, to take up the game. They continue to try to play until they find that they do not realise something of value for themselves. Yes, there are people who don't like or enjoy golf. Shocking, but true. The encouragement is good, but it is not a substitute for sustained motivation. So how do we hack motivation that makes you happier? One of the most fascinating, useful things we've learned from dopamine research is something I mentioned right at the beginning, that dopamine's real job is to encourage us to act, to achieve or avoid something. And you'll have noticed for yourself that when you have achieved a specific goal you wanted to achieve, you'll have a burst of feeling good, but this soon dissipates. Your feelings actually drop quite rapidly, like the wind has been taken from your sails. That positive feeling was serotonin rather than dopamine, because serotonin makes you feel generally happy and gives a sense of well-being and something we call pride. Your dopamine-induced pleasure was the anticipation of the reward. Now that you have achieved your goal, you have your reward. There is no more anticipation. You may even be getting a little edgy after achieving your goal, especially if others are not reinforcing you to feel good by congratulating you on your brilliant achievement. This can quickly lead to frustration, disappointment and burnout as you stress about why you feel less good. Than you did. The trick here is to set incremental goals, smaller outcome steps along the way, and dividing the larger goal into specific rewarding tasks such that you will look forward from one task to the next in anticipation of the next task as a reward in itself and along the journey to the far greater reward of the completed goal. We can train our brain to feed on bursts of dopamine triggered by such rewarding experiences. And by setting incremental specific outcomes, we rewire our brain by linking and stimulating a dopamine response to each part of the task. And you can do this for others as well by deliberately giving them very positive feedback as they progress through the subtasks. And if there's anything you want them to improve, then you use the feedback sandwich. Now, all it takes is for you to have a little courage to try it out and find that you'll be happier. Hope you've enjoyed this podcast. Learn how to hack motivation and teach others along the way. Share this with somebody you know could do with hacking their own motivation to give themselves an edge and encourage people to try it out. 
You go and have a blessed day. Bye. You've been listening to the Leadership Advantage podcast with me, Dr. John Kenworthy. If you'd like to find out more, visit us at selsim.com. It's why some leaders thrive and others struggle.